Sheriff Hutton in Yorkshire is a small village dominated by the remains of a very large late 14th century castle. A castle that was built sometime after 1377 by John Lord Neville. One of the principal seats of the powerful Neville family, it would stay in their ownership until a century later. The last Neville holder of the castle was Richard Neville, Earl of Warwick, otherwise known to posterity as Warwick the Kingmaker for his pivotal role in the Wars of the Roses. At Warwick's death in 1471, his estates were forfeit to the crown, and the castle of Sheriff Hutton, along with his other major stronghold at Midlam, were granted by King Edward IV to his brother Richard, Duke of Gloucester. The following year, the kingmaker's daughter Anne Neville was then married to Richard. With such important land holdings in the north, Richard was made the effective ruler of the north of England and he governed from both Middleham and Sheriff Hutton. It was in Middleham, probably in late 1473, though we cannot be entirely certain of that, that Anne gave birth to a son, Edward, who became known as Edward of Middleham. In June of 1483, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, became, of course, King Richard III. His wife, Anne Neville, became queen, and in September of 1483, little Edward was created Prince of Wales in York Minster. After Richard's accession, Prince Edward, as per royal tradition, was given his own household, and he lived separately from his parents. That household was based primarily at Middleham, though at times he lived at Sheriff Hutton too. Prince Edward's life would prove to be very brief, and he died in April of 1484 after a short illness. The Croyland Chronicler records that King Richard and Queen Anne were stricken with grief when they heard of the news of the loss of their son and heir. On hearing the news at Nottingham, where they were then residing, you might have seen his father and mother in a state almost bordering on madness by reason of their sudden grief. John Rouse, the chronicler of the Earls of Warwick, recalls Prince Edward's death and burial. Edward, illustrious Prince of Wales, only son and heir to King Richard III and his honourable consort Anne, Queen of England, died a child before his parents and was taken with honour to a grave at Middleham. Middleham Church, where, according to Rouse, Edward was buried, was a place that was important to Richard III, and in 1478 he had founded there what is called a Chantry College, a community of clergy whose job was to celebrate Mass for and to pray for the soul of the founder. The college was to consist of a dean, six chaplains, four clerks, six choristers and a sacristan. One of the clerks' particular roles was to celebrate Mass for the good of Richard's living family and the repose of the souls of his departed family daily. So it makes sense for young Prince Edward to be buried there, in the place of his death, and where he would be remembered perpetually by this Chantry College community. When his father and mother finally went north after his death, they made straight for Middleham, suggesting that they were going to his grave. Now, there is some modern contention over Edward's burial place, and to explore that, I want to take you to Sheriff Hutton Church, which I visited a month or so ago. The parish church, which is dedicated to St Helen and the Holy Cross, is at the other end of the village from the Great Castle. It is a church with 12th century origins. The lower part of the tower and the nave date from this period, although the church building was expanded considerably in the 14th and 15th century. A couple of local families had chapels constructed at this time for their burials, and the prominent chapel on the south side that you can see here on the right of the building was constructed by Thomas Gower, Lord of the Manor of Stittenham, who died in 1486. The Nevilles, the principal landholders, didn't use this place as their major burial place, as most of the prominent members of the family were buried in the family mausoleum at Stainedrop Church, near their other major seats, Raby Castle and Northumberland, and others in the 15th century were buried at Bisham Abbey in Berkshire. 
If you go down the north aisle of Sherifutton Church, you enter another local family chapel, which in the 14th and 15th century was the burial place of the Cornborough family and their descendants, the Withams. Here you will see monuments to both of those families. But there is also a further monument here that doesn't belong to that family group. Made of alabaster, it is a recumbent effigy of a male figure lying on top of a tomb chest. This tomb is not in its original position. It was first recorded in the 17th century in the south aisle of the church where the Neville family had established a small chantry chapel for themselves. The monument was for many years in pieces and was only reconstructed and placed in its present location in the 20th century. The monument is made of very poor quality alabaster, quarried in Yorkshire and containing lots of flint nodules and it has been very badly weathered as though it's been exposed for a long period of time to the elements. The identity of the commemorated individual is unclear. Given the size of the figure, it has been assumed that it commemorates a boy, which is a reasonable assumption. It has been suggested since 1902 that this may be the tomb of Edward of Midlam, and that the presence of the tomb indicates that he was buried here in Sheriff Hutton rather than in Midlam, as the contemporary sources suggest. This idea has grown so much currency over the past hundred years that it is often considered as a given that this monument is that of poor young Prince Edward. In the church, there are boards claiming this as almost certain fact. However, there has been fierce debate about this subject matter among historians, particularly among members of the Richard III Society. The particular focus of the debate is the curious hat that the effigy is wearing over his pudding basin haircut. It appears to be what is called a cap of maintenance, a fur-trimmed bonnet that is worn by kings, princes and members of the higher nobility and was a symbol of royal authority in the Middle Ages. What boy other than a prince would wear one, you might ask? On the tomb chest itself is a representation of the Holy Trinity with a tiny kneeling figure before it, again with a pudding basin hairstyle. This figure appears to be dressed in armour. Those who consider this to be Edward's tomb think this is King Richard III. The monument also has two blank shields of arms. These shields, along with much of the monument, would once have been painted. One of these shields of arms is known to have once uh, been emblazoned with the arms of the Neville family. Now this could of course be a reference to Prince Edward's mother and Neville, but equally to another member of her family. As for me, I'm of the view that this cannot be the effigy of Prince Edward of Midlam. Stylistically, it is far too early. This effigy shows the fashions not of the 1480s, but of the 1430s and 1440s. The cut of the doublet the figure is wearing and the pudding basin hairstyle of the effigy and of the small kneeling figure before the Trinity were the fashion of Prince Edward's grandfather's age, not of his own. In the 1470s, 80s and 90s, men and boys wore their hair shoulder length. The tomb chest with the angels holding shields can be compared to monuments made in and around York in the first half of the 15th century. So, whose tomb is this if it's not that of the prince? Well, it's the most likely a member of the Neville family, who as important members of the aristocracy may well have worn a cap of maintenance, if that is what is on the figure's head. Inclusion of the Holy Trinity on the tomb chest is not incidental. The Nevilles had a particular devotion to the Holy Trinity and maintained a chapel with that dedication in the castle. Several minor members of the family, younger sons, are known to have been buried here in Sheriff Hutton Church. Ralph, one of the young sons of Richard Neville, Earl of Salisbury, was buried here in the 1440s. Lord Salisbury's brother John, one of the sons of Ralph Neville, Earl of Westmoreland, was buried here in the later uh, 1420s. 
And here is a manuscript illustration of Ralph Neville, Earl of Westmoreland, and his sons. And as you see, they all have the pudding basin hairstyle and wear doublets, very much of the style shown on the effigy. It is likely the monument is either that of young Ralph or young John Neville. Some have suggested that the monument may originally have been in the castle chapel dedicated to the Holy Trinity, which was ruinous for a time, and that this might account for the very weathered condition of the tomb. That would certainly make a lot of sense. So, to answer the question I set, is this the tomb of Prince Edward of Midlam, son of Richard III? Well, most probably not. He is almost certainly buried below the floor of the chancel of Midland Church in a now unmarked grave. Had his father been on the throne for longer and not been overthrown the year after his son's death, a splendid monument may well have been erected over this grave. One that was much more lavish than the rather small, battered and mysterious effigy that survives in Sheriff Hutton Church. Thanks very much for watching. If you like my videos, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share. If you feel able to support the channel, you can do that through PayPal or Buy Me A Coffee. There are links at the top of the main page. Or better still, you can subscribe to my magazine, The Antiquary, and receive a beautifully illustrated journal each month with more articles and content. My thanks to everybody who supports the channel.